All right, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly the parts needed to build the SDR Pi, as I'm calling it, and walk you through step by step on the computer and on the Pi how to set up the software. Um, I'll probably include the image when I'm done with all of this, so you guys can just download that and load it up right away. Um, but for those that want to follow along, I'll do a step by step instruction guide for booting up the SDR trunk software in the headless mode, and I'll include all the links and uh, text in the description so you can just um, try it yourself if you don't want to watch along. So, uh, well, before I get started, uh, I want to thank all you guys. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get so many views on this video. Yeah, actually, I don't, I don't even know what I expected from starting this channel, um, but a thousand views and 30 subscribers in a couple days seems pretty cool to me. Um, and just want to let you let you know that it's not all going to be SDR content. Uh, I'm going to have different types of electronics projects, maybe some things with the car, uh, who knows what. So stay tuned if you're into that. If not, um, well, just, I don't know, don't, un don't unsubscribe. You'll hurt my feelings. But uh, anyway, all right, let's get started. So with the hardware, I'm going to put a link to the display. And the display comes with, uh, I think, all the wires that you see here the HDMI to mini or micro HDMI, um, the red and black power cables, the USB touch cable, and um, that's that. I've got a USB drive here for my boot media, and I've got a USB extender to mount the RTL SDR on top. I'll put links to all of this, and I have this antenna here um, upgraded from the Wi-Fi antenna that I was using. This is, this is actually like the UHF, uh, I think VHF, UHF antenna. And I've got the cooler on there now, super key. Um, that's all this hardware. And I'm still using the MacBook um, power brick with the MacBook cable. Uh, it seems to work okay, but still waiting on getting that um, Raspberry Pi power supply delivered. Uh, so, with that being said, let's dive into the software setup. We've got the blank USB stick inserted, and we've got the Raspberry Pi imager loaded up, and we've selected Raspberry Pi 5. For operating system, we're going to choose um, Other, and then we're going to choose the 64-bit Lite OS. This has no desktop environment. So this is the headless version. And then we'll install the minimum functionality that we need to launch the SDR trunk software uh, GUI. Okay. And we select our storage media. This is 64 gigabyte USB 3 drive. And we'll hit next to customize our OS settings. So we want to set the host name. I use SDR Pi and set the username and password. I'll use top DNG for both the username and password. We're not going to configure the wireless LAN here. Um, we could, but I want to share the image when I'm done. So I guess it doesn't matter if I do it here or on the Pi. I'll have to clear it before I share it, but I'll just do it on the Pi. Um, just for whatever reason. Anyway, um, set so the locale and enable SSH and disable telemetry. Okay, so we will burn that onto the drive. And once this is done writing, before I put it onto the Pi, I need to add something in the config.txt file so that the Pi won't complain uh, when it's booting from USB without the official adapter. And that's right here um, in my notes file. I'll put all this uh, in the description. So I have to add this USB max current enable one to the config.txt file. Um, so we'll speed this part up. OK, 
cool so that's written and I actually don't want to remove it yet I'm gonna sort of just unplug it and plug it back in and I'll open this bootfs directory and config.txt is what we want to add this line to so I just put it here and say Okay, now we can eject it and remove it from our computer and put it into the pie. One more thing that I bought is this uh, USB keyboard with trackpad. It's really convenient to just uh, plug in and use a uh, mouse and keyboard in one. Power it up. Okay, so the first boot will take a bit of time, um, but subsequent boots should be a lot faster. So we may just speed this up. Okay, uh, we're booted up finally, and it's asking me for my login, so I'll just type in the login. And the same password that I set on the imager. Um, now, since I didn't set the password on the imager for the Wi-Fi, I'll do it through the Raspi config. And there's also one more thing we need to do in there. So we'll type in sudo raspi config and in the system options we'll go to wireless LAN press uh, U and go to United States and SSID and the passphrase okay Then the other thing I want to do is go back to system options, go to boot, and select B2 console auto login. So this way I don't have to type in the username and password every time. Okay, we'll hit finish. Would you like to reboot now? Sure. So once this reboots, I will check if it's pulling an IP from my wireless network and we can start installing stuff. Cool, so we are booted up and it's auto logged in for us. Um, so now I'll just do an IF config and we have our IP. So now I will go back onto the computer here and SSH into it. two consoles up. So um, the first thing we want to do is run this um, apt update and upgrade. This will take a while so let's just go for it. Yes. All right. And, well, now we wait. I wasn't kidding when I said that take a while. So now that that's done, we want to install a couple more packages. Uh, this will install the stuff for our um, open box, an X server, and also the RTL SDR drivers. So let's fire away. And this shouldn't take as long, but 
we'll speed it up as well. And when it's done, we're going to want to uh, issue a reboot. And then we'll install the SDR software. Those are installed, so let's do our reboot. And then, once we're back up online, we'll download these zip files from the SDR trunk GitHub. Now we're going to download those zip files. So one is the pre-compiled um, SDR trunk software for the ARM Linux, and the other is the JMBE um, creator package, which uh, we'll need to compile, but it's like super, super easy. And I've never seen anything go wrong with that one, so uh, don't, don't be worried. Compiling STR trunk is a different story. I actually haven't been able to compile that um, on the Pi itself. Okay, so let's first we need to unzip these. run this creator script and that'll generate a jar file in the previous directory okay we'll just check that it's there yep it's there and so now we are pretty much ready to start these guys up. Um, let's go ahead and just edit the open box auto start script. So let's exit the SSH session and reopen it with the uh, capital Y flag. And then we can say sudo nano etc xdj open box auto start there we go okay so here let's just grab all these lines copy them paste them uh looks good to me all right so cut that out exit uh, now let's also edit our um, bash rc file, so sudo nano bash rc, and here at the very end, let's just put start x. Okay, write that out. And so now, if we reboot the pi, it should launch. SDR trunk. So we don't need the computer anymore. So let's just reboot it and look at the pie. We were missing um, a dash thing. Oh man, sorry guys. We are all over the place here. We're missing the bin directory. Okay. Now we should be good. So if we start X. All right. And there we have it. So um, I'm not going to do this calibration right now. You should do that. And I probably won't go over in this video how to do the um, playlist editor um, and adding channels and stuff. There's a lot of other videos that go over that. I just want to showcase how to get this running on boot as the only thing on the Raspberry Pi 5. Um, there is one extra thing that you need to do, um, 
and let's go to the user preferences. Okay, here we go. Audio library. So we just select the JMBE jar file that we created. So this will let you listen to, to the P25 channels. And of course, <clears throat> you'll need to add those here. There's one more thing that I want to show you guys. And that's after you've configured everything in SDR trunk. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go over that. I'm not going to add the channels in uh, on this video. But when you configure it to however you like um, with, your, with your XML file, um, I highly recommend that you put the um, file system in read-only mode so that when you unplug and plug this thing in and out of power, you don't run the risk of corrupting the file system, which could lead to you, know, you needing to redo this whole process over and over again. So um, to do that, you just run the config. And you go to performance options, overlay file system. Would you like the overlay file system to be enabled? Um, here, you can put yes, but I just go no. And would you like the boot partition to be write protected? This is what I would put yes on. Now it's read only, and we can reboot. So I think what I'll do for you guys is uh, I'm going to strip my Wi-Fi credentials out of this um, configuration and I'm going to revert this read-only change because um, this is no good without any XML file um, configured in the uh, SDR trunk um, and I'll upload an image. Actually, I want to show you guys how to make that image. So uh, let's do that before we end the video. With how you've configured your boot media and you want to maybe make multiple of these devices, maybe each one has a different um, configuration. Well, the point of this is to show you how to clone the configuration, but then you can change them manually later. Uh, you want to have your um, USB drive inserted into your Mac and start up the disk utility. And this is important. You want to go to View, make sure you have Show All Devices, and you want to select your um, USB drive, the whole drive, not just the bootfs. And you will hit uh, image from, and then you can, for format, select DVD CD master. And I'm not gonna hit save, but if you hit save, um, this will generate a CDR file, which you can just rename to ISO and use like a Balena Etcher or any similar software to just use that ISO file, write it to your new uh, disk, and, and all the setup that we did is, is contained there and you just have cloned basically um, your rig. So if you wanna make one for a friend, you don't have to go through all that setup. If you wanna have multiple setups, just buy more hardware, clone the disk, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna strip my Wi-Fi credentials out from this image and then I'll hit save and I will share it with you all. Um, once again, thanks for the attention and interest and uh, let me know what you wanna see more of.